closed in Colossians chapter 2 um, verse 9 and 10 we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power and I said there that what Satan does to spoil us is he brings philosophy and vain deceit which is not utter Christ what he does is I'll give him verse, verse 8 now um, what he does is he establishes vain philosophy and deceit now look at it beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and what are philosophies and vain deceits upon they are upon the tradition of men after the rudiments of this world and what so yesterday we established that there are many cultural things we embrace and try to force scripture to say what we have embraced as culture but those things are not after Christ. They are after the traditions of men, not after Christ. Then he showed us in verse 10, he said, no, verse 9, verse 9, he said, and ye are complete in him. Sorry, for in him, Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead revealed in body. Ah, and you remember we had said on Friday night in Ephesians chapter 3 that I can be filled with all the fullness of God. Now the Bible shows you that the first example of being filled with all the fullness of God is Christ in his body manifestation. And Jesus the Christ said, no man has seen the Father at any time. He said, but the son who proceeds from the bosom of the father, he hath revealed him. So, let's take that again. No man has seen the father at any time. That means from Genesis till today, nobody has seen the father. So, who was Moses talking with? Jesus. Who came to visit Abraham? Jesus okay sorry now you look angry the bible says in john chapter who made the world jesus john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made so who made the world jesus hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 god who had sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past by, to our fathers by the prophets had in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and by whom also Ah, this Jesus matter is serious. So Jesus is more serious than we took him. That means the Father formed nothing. Oh, I started something yesterday in Genesis chapter two. You remember? Ah, uh, let me show you one more. Are you all right? Can we do it? Genesis chapter one from verse three, and God said, "Let there be light." And there was light. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. And God called the light day. Verse 6. 6. And God said. So go back home and finish all the God. In the entire Genesis chapter 1. You find God. 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 And then he enters to Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Give us 2 verse 1. It started with God. Genesis 2 1. Tell us what the heavens and the earth. Sorry. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Verse 2. He said, and on the seventh day, what? God ended his work. Go and check the original. You will find out that the word used for God here is Elohim. Alright? Verse 3. God finished all the work and God blessed the seventh day, Elohim, and sanctified him because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Next verse. Verse 4, these are the generations of the heavens and the earths when they were created, when 
in the day that stop. He moved from God to the Lord God. Move on. Verse 5. From Elohim to Yahweh. And every plant of the next verse. Ah, that's six, six, six. No, no, no. Go back, go back, go back, go back. That's right. And every plant of the field, as and every half of the field before it grew, for so suddenly God changed into the Lord God. Because one dimension of God had finished and had handed over to the next dimension of God. And this dimension of God that brought to formation all things that Elohim had taught is Jesus. <laughs> because by him also he made all the worlds. So it was God's idea. It was Jesus' execution. In Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But that's not the problem. The problem is that the Bible says and you are complete in him. Let me tell you the literal meaning of you are complete in him. Everything that he is, you are becoming. Legally, you are. Now, let's, let's see it from a Jewish perspective. So when Christ said, I am the son of God, what, what did the Jews see? John chapter 5 verse 18. Ooh, labora gadiataya. I, hey, when Jesus says, I'm the son of God, what offended the Jews? Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, hey, hey, go back. Go back. Verse 17. 17. The son. Uh, sorry. But Jesus answered them and said, My father works. And he that told. I work. The moment he said, my father works, and because my father works, I work. I will show you that operation. is in a few verses down. Because my father works, I work. Now, hold on. Next verse. How does the father work, and how do I respond to the work, right? But first, what did the Jews do? The Jews, therefore, sought the more to kill him. Because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but he said also that God was his father implication. That means to say God is my father. Lifts me from humanity and gives me a portion in divinity. So Peter said, that he has made us partakers of the divine nature. But for us to partake in that divine nature, he added, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That means the limitation of us registering ourselves as members of divinity is corruption. So if we can deal with the flesh and get the flesh out of the way, the full manifest nature of how we ought to live becomes obvious. Uh, let's read a few verses down. Just let's just enjoy it. So Jesus wanted to show you how the operation is. He showed you, he had said it in saying, He said, My father works, and the works that my father is doing is what I do. Right? Verse 19, 19, 19, 19. Now, then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son. Mm -hmm. I, I. the son can do nothing do you remember for those of you who were here yesterday morning you remember that we established from the garden that man lost his liberty when he bought the right to start to think for himself I'll come again so liberty is letting God think for you and you execute what he has taught so will for a believer is not the right to choose is the right to insist on what god has chosen hey i said again so my we is no longer i want to choose whether i want to do god or i don't want to do god jesus said it clearly to the woman at the well in john chapter 4. he said the time is coming where I, and now is when true worshipers 
We will worship the Father in spirit and truth. No, that's not what I was even looking for. But the Father seeks such to worship him. He said, ah. Good. The time is coming. When they that worship the Father, choice, must worship in spirit and in truth. Stop. That means your choice ended when you chose God. I'll come again. They that worship the Father, choice. That means in the world, there are many other people who don't worship the Father. So you want to choose whether or not you want to worship the Father. But the day you chose that you want to worship the Father, after that day, your choice finished. Because you cannot now want to worship the Father and recommend for the Father how he should be worshipped. Most worship in spirit and in truth. Hey, hey. That means it's all right if you are outside the Father. Judgment will sort us. It will split the sheep and the goat. But it is not all right for you to be inside the Father and still be exercising. You see me? I don't like the way they do their Christianity. I don't see. I don't. I don't take these things too seriously. It's all right. The problem is that you are not the one who did the recommendation as to how seriously we should take this thing. So let's hope that you are right and we are wrong. I'm coming. Just in case you didn't hear me. You know me, I like to take my own Christianity very easy. These guys take this thing too seriously. The problem is that the only right you have to take is Christianity. The too seriously is not your right. The too seriously or not so seriously has to be according to his recommendation. Because you cannot choose who to worship and choose how to worship who you have chosen. The one you have chosen to worship has to reveal to you how he has to be worshipped. I, I, wish, I, I wish somebody heard me. Hey, I'm becoming what I see. Oh, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Oh, it's the song of the new man. When you understand it, it adds, sir, to your fear and trepidation when you study. Mm. I started something as I 66. I heard Peterson continue it today. God, so too large to be contained in the heavens, but chose my heart to be his home. But you remember I told you on Friday that it's not every man that he lives in. It is to this man will I look. Isaiah 66. He that is of a broken and a contrite heart, he said, who trembles at my word? That means the man understands that the word of God for him is not, is not whether I choose to hear him or I do not choose. No, 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 no. The word of God is not a suggestion for me. It's not even an instruction. It is my very life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the seriousness I wear when the word of God is proceeding tells me how important I believe it is. Nobody goes late for a visa interview. It's because of how important we believe it is. People come late to church. And it's nothing. Hey, let me say the one that will cause trouble. So recently, Pastor Emmanuel, you know what I started doing? I started locking church doors. He said, oh, in my church now. You come late, you stay outside. Oh, because if, if God is not that important to you, stay at home. Oh, I'm big. the only exception to the rule is if you are coming to church for the first time. We don't know whether you are an unbeliever trying to find God, all of that. The moment you register in the company of believers, you must understand that worshiping God is a serious matter. And in no time you will see the reason why. Because where we are going to is not the place where God gives us handouts. It's the place where he changes us into who he is. That's serious business, man. And the reason why he's changing us into who he is 
is because ultimately the earth is going to depend on our government. It's the reason why he made us. I mean, I got tired of it. I told myself, the Bible says that certain people are spots in our feasts. They want to do God the way they want to do God. The problem is that the people who are serious about God will soon be affected by the lackadaisical attitude of those who don't want to do God. And the days that are coming are too dire for the earth. Sometimes the problem is that you don't see from a prophetic standpoint. You are always playing catch up. It's after Russia has struck Ukraine that you know that something is about to go wrong. It's a wrong way to live. You are a believer. You are supposed to live prophetically. The world is not supposed to catch you up by surprise. And even if you didn't hear a word of prophecy, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. There is nothing happening in the world today that scripture didn't recommend. But it didn't only tell us what will happen. He told us what manner of men we ought to be in the face of those kind of circumstances. I don't play around people who don't take God seriously. I found out that even God hates lukewarmness. So I will not be like God if I love you when you are lukewarm. Look at my eyes. Hey, Pastor Emmanuel, forgive me for this next one I'm going to do. Because it's you to affect. Sorry. It's the reason why we can have a conference from Friday to a Sunday morning. And some of you are just showing up. Because actually what you came to do is to register the dousing of your conscience that you attended service for this week. It, it's not your time. There's a prophecy for you. It's in Revelation 11. The Bible says that when those dire days show up, God will declare and tell an angel, go and measure the temple. He said, but everything that is in the outer court, leave it. It has been given to the Gentiles. Paul called it a great falling away. Not everybody will make it past the line. Sweet Holy Spirit, thank you for being Lord. Lord, can I preach my message now? Okay. Let me tell you the truth. You see that expression? It wasn't me. If you think it is me, it's far away from what I came to preach. But when the spirit sends out a warning, please listen. Listen. It's part of the reasons why Satan is selling. I thank God I don't have a church in Lagos. That means I gain nothing by destroying the church here. If I possibly had a church two doors away, then I could just think maybe I'm trying to move members. Let me tell you. The days, oh, the Bible says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That means you don't walk the same way in every time. There are certain things you did last year that were okay, that are not okay now. Because the days are more evil now than they were yesterday. What does it mean to walk circumspectly? Two verses later, and Ephesians 5 explained it. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. That means when a man takes his next step, according to the revelation of what the will of God is, the evil day can never overtake that man. Listen, whatever your excuse is, whatever your excuse is, the church is still God's bride. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. No matter how badly damaged you have been by the church, take it from me as a simple advice. I said to our church a few weeks ago, many of you have not been pained half as much as some of us have been by the church. The only problem is that we did not elect the church to be the body of Christ. He chose it. So being angry with the church does not even help your life. Be angry with the pastor who is not behaving well, but find another pastor. 
clean your boat sit down hear the word of the lord and obey it because part of what satan is doing in the last days is the bible says do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some that all the more as you see the day approaching meaning as the evil day approaches it will become a manner a character do not associate yourself with believers the prophecy is happening before our eyes and we have english explanation you know i just i don't i don't like stress i mean come on church is too much stress people will just be entering into your life and going out and very soon and they don't offend you they have offended you in the office you are still going there ah sweet holy spirit I said, man, help me beg God. Let me preach my message. It's not my message. It's his message, Abby. Mm. It's still Lord. Maybe that's the spirit's call for a transition. For someone who had given up on the assembling of the brethren. To say to God, Lord, I changed my mind. Now I understand that my wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Because it's men who will normally offend you. That will make you... Some people have not been offended. They have only heard the stories of other people who are offended and they will not do church they will not commit to God anymore because they believe that no I need to protect myself from offense life gives you offense every day and you have not protected yourself against the offense of life it seems easier to be offended with God no wonder Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 tell John blessed is he whosoever it is that is not offended in me sometimes you think being offended in God is being offended in God because he possibly didn't answer a prayer no sometimes that's not what it means Saul of Tarsus was persecuting the church he was chasing men up and down killing them when Jesus appeared to him he, he was reporting to Agrippa. He said, at noonday, a light appeared brighter than the sun. He said, and out of the light, I heard his voice. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul never saw Jesus. He wasn't part of the process that killed Jesus. Saul persecuted the church of Jesus. And Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? That means you can be offended with the church of Jesus. And you thought it was the church you were offended with. But maybe the Lord Jesus is saying to you today, why are you offended in me? If he has borne your imperfections, why is it so difficult to bear the imperfections of his church? He's still Lord over his church. He's still the one making his church. He's still the one who is at work in his church. His willing and doing of his good pleasure. It is that same church the Holy Spirit has not given on, given upon. He is still perfecting that bride that he might present her worthy to Christ. How do you enter into God and then say to yourself, you are offended in church? So you developed a new manner of worship for yourself. You told yourself, I'm safer just watching services online because it stops human interactions. So I will not be offended. The problem is that there is no online membership in heaven. It's alright if you traveled and you were somewhere and you need to connect with the brethren. It's alright if you found the word of the Lord somewhere. Maybe the person is in America and you need to catch up with it. 
So I don't have a problem with being online. I am online. My ministry is online. I'm saying to you, it does not take away the place of the fellowship of the brethren. All of the days of my life, I'll be worshiping. All of the days of my say I'll be worshiping. All of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Say one more time. Say I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Say I'll be here, I'll be here, worshiping, all of the days of my life, all of the days of my life. <laughs> God is healing matters from 13 years ago. I see it. I can describe the matter by, by the word of knowledge. I can describe it. You speak about a thing and you thought you agreed. And something else was executed. So you picked up an offense. And you thought you overcame it. Except that when the Lord began to probe the roots of bitterness, you saw it rising again. Today, by the love of God, every root of bitterness, every pain, every falsehood every deceit every veil that stops our eyes from seeing we call them torn down uprooted in the name of jesus blessed be your name our father we give you praise please take your seats the time is far gone but jesus is glorified so like I was saying before the spirit took his service well I was saying it by the spirit God is not interested in giving you handouts in his real intent he is more interested in making you than giving you because when he makes you you become the executor of that which is in his heart give me back John chapter 5 I said we need to see that operation jesus said the father works and as long as the father is working the son works but look at what he said then jesus answered them and said unto them verily verily i say unto you the son can of himself do nothing it is what the son sees the father doing that the son himself does then listen he now shows you how that operation works next verse how does he work for the father loves the son and shows the son whatsoever the father is doing hold on that means the level of clearance you have in the spirit is the amount of the works that the father is doing that is revealed to you because jesus said and the father will show the son greater works than what i have done already so that you may mother that means greater works are not supposed to be a product of desiring to work mighty miracles you remember i told you for those of you who are here i believe on friday night that the bible said let me show you a more excellent way and love became the more excellent way so jesus didn't do any miracle because he wanted to show power he didn't even do any miracle because he wanted to heal the sick every miracle he did he did because he saw what the father intends to do 
and when he saw the father's heart concerning a blind man he knew that if this is what the father thinks concerning a blind man then all the father is looking for is a human vessel who will execute that which the father is thinking now don't forget we said he made us partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world to loss that's second chapter 1 verse 4